Hello, friends, shalom, family, to all of you out there. And uh, I just am so glad to be with you again as we are studying the names of God, the awesome names of God. And so uh, hopefully this lesson will bless you and, and will strengthen you and help you if you're going through some trials or afflictions or whatever it is that you may be going through. And so we're going to begin with prayer and invite the Holy Spirit into our study. Wonderful Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We love you. We, we want to get to know you more, Holy Spirit, because you are the one who speaks to the congregations. You are the one who guides us in the earth. We know that our master, Yahushua, is on the right hand of Yahweh, our father, but you are, and you are the one who help us and counsel us and teach us. You guide us into truth. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Uh, open up our hearts to receive your word and open up our ears to hear open up our eyes to see what you want us to see. Give us deeper revelation of who Yahushua is and who Yahweh, his father is. Thank you, thank you. And we give you the glory in advance right now at the beginning of this lesson in Yahushua's name, amen. Okay, so we're gonna start by sharing the screen and we are today doing part four of of our study on the awesome names of God. And so we're going to start our uh, PowerPoint presentation. And this is part four. So let me correct that right now. I did part three last week. So excuse me, excuse me. This is part four. So let's get it right. Okay. Okay. So this lesson, we are going to study um, we're going to study Yahweh Yireh, or we know him as Jehovah Jireh, and we're going to study uh, Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh Rapheka. That are those are the two names of uh, we know him as Jehovah Rapha. So let's just get going. Let's just dig in. And as and this is an overview because there is so much truth and so it's so rich that it is impossible to uh it impossible to to do all of these lessons in depth and so i'm just doing a little at this time and perhaps later on i will uh come back if the spirit says so and do in-depth uh, teaching on the awesome names of god but anyway, we know that from the first three parts that the biblical names are not like we think of them. We want to name our children such pretty names and we want to name them popular names. But in biblical times, they did not do that. Uh, the names reflected a person's character or who the person would become or who the, uh, the uh, parents wanted them to become. And even more significantly, a lot of times the names were also given, given as a way of recording history, depicting the events that were occurring at that time. So whatever was going on uh, in, the, uh, in the surrounding area or even far off that would affect uh, the Hebrews, they would name their child, whether it was an earthquake or whether it was uh, 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 some event or, or, or an invasion or whatever. The baby was, was often named uh, because of what was going on. So they're not like the names that we name are not like the names that our ancestors named. And the first one we're going to talk about is Yahweh Shama, Yahweh Shama, and Yahweh Shama uh, means the Lord is present. Uh, 
In other words, he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He is with you forever and ever. And he is your best friend. And I know that I consider him as my best friend. And he's the best, he's a best friend who never betrays you. You can tell him the secrets of your heart that you can't share with anybody else because then they will blast it all over um, all over the community or on Facebook or whatever. Like the young people say, they will put you on blast. But uh, uh, Yahweh Shama never, never, never betrays you. And so, and then when you do tell him your problems, uh, uh, he will do something about them. He is, he just won't stop at listening. He will intervene in your situation. And, uh, and in Ezekiel 35 and 48, I believe this may be um, the first time we, we see the name, the Lord is there or the Lord is present, Yahweh Shammah. And it reads, it was around about 18,000 measures and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. Now, the background of this particular scripture is, is that Yahweh God is showing Ezekiel the new Jerusalem. And he's giving him measurements uh, of the temple and measurements of the city. And so uh, it was going to be named the Lord is there, there or uh, Yahweh Shammah. And we, and, and, uh, oh, I apologize. Genesis 28, 15 is the first time we see Yahweh Shammah. And Genesis uh, 28, 15 reads, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that, which I have spoken to thee of. Now, this is Yahweh talking to Jacob, our forefather. And, uh, and he's promising that he's going to bring him back from where he went, where he got his two wives, Rachel and Leah. And uh, he would bring them back. And this was a covenant that uh, uh, God established with Jacob. And so he promised, and this covenant is for us because we are the seed of Jacob. And it's and he, he promised he promised Abraham, he promised Isaac, and we pro he promised Jacob that he will bring us again into the land that he promised. And he will not leave us until he's done that which he's spoken of. And uh, if you remember the ch uh, uh, the chosen people series that I did. Uh, God promised, and it, and and yes, He did turn His face away because of the wickedness of our ancestors. But He promised that He will bring us back again to the land that He promised. And uh, these are scriptures that refer to Yahweh Shama, Psalms forty six. And one reads, "God is our refuge and strength, a very present help." in trouble. Now, some of you Fred Hammond fans might remember that he recorded uh, that scripture and that's just about all he said on that because that's enough. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And sometimes when things aren't going right with me or going my way, I will often put that, that, uh, that recording uh, in my ear and just listen to it and I'm encouraged. And then uh, Psalms 39 is, is also one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, and it's it, uh, it's talking about how the all present omniscient and, and I'm knowing all knowing God uh, is always there. He, he never leaves. Even when we are in sin or we turn our backs on him, he never leaves. He's right where we left him. And it reads verse seven, whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I sin up into heaven, 
thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And remember that this is a choice. It even alludes to that, that we have a choice whether we're going to be in heaven or we're going to be in hell. Verse nine, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. So this is an example that he knows where we are, it, no matter where we go or whether we land, uh, he's right there. Verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. So we know that most sin happens at night in the dark. And so even, even when we think or people think that they are hiding from other people, they are not hiding from God because the night is just like light to God. Okay, and in verse 12, it says, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. This is the all-seeing God. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So there's no difference from, for, for our father. There's no difference at all. And in Hebrews 13 and 5, this is one of my, uh, uh, this is one of my uh, favorite verses. And, uh, and uh, it, it really has encouraged me. And I'm, I am actually reading from the Amplified this time, and it says, verse five, let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money, shun greed, be financially ethical, being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Isn't that awesome? Nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. I love that because that assures me that he will never leave me and he won't leave me without support and he won't leave you. He won't leave you helpless. And, and we have to call out to him, of course, but he won't leave us helpless and relax his hold. That is very, very reassuring. And the next uh, a name we're going to talk about is Yahweh you Ray or Jehovah Jireh, as we pronounce. And the Lord, it means the Lord will provide. And the first time we we see the name Yahweh Yireh is uh, when uh, Abraham was getting ready to be obedient to God. He was being obedient to God. And he was, uh, God had told him he was testing him to sacrifice his only son. Okay, so let's look at verse seven. It says, Isaac spoke unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So they had stopped so that, so that at the foot of the mountain, so that Isaac could ask him that question. But, but Abraham was confident that he was a hundred years old when he had him, when he fathered Isaac. So he knew that if God gave him Isaac one time, he will give back Isaac if he had to sacrifice him. But I believe that Abraham knew his God. And he knew his God's character, and he was going to have a ram waiting up there on the top of Mount Moriah, or Mount Moriah, as we call it. And this is the same place where uh, uh, our Savior, Yahushua, was sacrificed. And Abraham, and then it go down to 14, 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. 
And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Now it is, it is believed that God had already uh, God's original plan was the ram to be waiting for them at the altar that he was directing Abraham to, to uh, sacrifice. But it is believed that the enemy, Satan, had tried to stop that ram from getting to the, the altar, the sacrifice. So he caused him, caused the ram to be entangled in a, a bush, in a thicket. But see, Satan is no match for our almighty God. And so when uh, Isaac, when uh, Isaac was, was bound, and he was laid upon the altar and and uh, uh, Abraham took up the knife and he was getting ready to uh, cut Isaac's throat. Uh, the, he heard, Abraham heard the ram. And so he dropped the knife and immediately went to get the, uh, the uh, entangled ram out of the thicket. And it was, and then uh, God, he, he found out that God indeed did. Uh, provide a ram. And so this is how Yahweh Yireh is. He will provide for us, but the enemy will try to entangle our blessings, the things that we have prayed for and we are believing God for. He will try to entangle up our blessings just like he did that ram. And so, uh, but, but you know what? God is almighty. He will always cause us to trust triumph in Christ Jesus because Abraham said that the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. It was uh, uh, looking into the future. It was a foreshadowing of our Savior, Yahushua, Jesus, to be the sacrifice for our sin. So you said, you see in, in verse eight, and Abraham uh, said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went together. So this is uh, just a foreshadowing of how our Savior will always be the, always come to our rescue. He will always, God, uh, God has uh, put in Yahushua everything that we need. And it is in our union with him that he provides for all of our needs. That's worth shouting about. That's a shouting point right then. So let's just stop and say hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we know that Yahushua Mashiach or Jesus Christ said that, that the Father cares for us. And we never need to worry about provisions. Even when it looks like it looks so glim and, and it looks like that we're not going to make it, but he always, he always, that's my favorite verse. Thanks be to God, our father, who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and through us wash the fragrance of what it is to know him. That is in Hebrew, but I cannot uh, cite the exact uh, verse, but I know it's one of my, one of my anchor scriptures. Jesus or Yahushua is our source of life in every way. Everything that we need is in Christ Jesus. And, and look at these scriptures, uh, Matthew 6, 25 through 27, and I'm, I'm uh, using the Amplified version this time, and it says in verse 25, therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow seed, nor reap the harvest, nor gather the crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And this is how he considers us. He, we are valuable to him, much more than the birds or the sparrows. And verse 27, and who of you by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? So, so, it, so I'm getting from this verse, my beloved, my family, that we can actually stop worrying. You know, I know worry seems to encompass us and then close in on us, but we can stop worrying because Yahushua, our Savior, is saying that, uh, that look at the birds. They don't worry. They just know that the Heavenly Father is going to provide for them. And so, and then worrying is not going to help anyway. It's only going to cause our blood pressure to go up and stress and all of the sicknesses that and diseases that come with stress. And verse 28, and why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wildflowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Verse 29, yet I say to you that, not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. And verse 30, but if God so clothes the grass of the fear, field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith, so even as when we have little faith, we just need a mustard seed to just trust, trust our father that he, he is going to provide for everything, provide everything that we need. He is an awesome, good, good father. That's who he is. And we are loved by him. That's who we are. And, uh, and it continues on. Therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Well, who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the ones that are outside of the covenant. And we see this on the news every day. They're only worrying about themselves. They're passing laws that will enrich themselves up in Washington, D.C. They're only worried. They make decisions uh, because they are because greed and graft and avarice is controlling them. And, so, and even though so many of them are rich and they are millionaires, it's just not enough. They keep is there that they are uh, grafters and they are they are continually trying to get more money well how much do you need a lot of them have more than they'll ever spend in their lifetime and it was even hard for them to even pass a bill that will help those that were in need those were out of work those who were uh, uh, those who had had to shut down their business and are in the the food lines and at the soup kitchens and and there's, they don't have anything because they run out of their resources. But they barely passed the bill for six hundred dollars a month. And to those who have not had any money, that's nothing. That be at the cost of groceries and cost of everything they need, utilities and all of this. That is nothing. And then we learned uh, last night that the president is threatening to veto that. So they may not get nothing. But this is an example of verse 32. Because we know that uh, we know that Trump will not do anything unless he gains benefit out of it. And it says, for the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But don't, we don't need to worry. For our heavenly father knows that we need everything. He knows what we need even before we ask. 
okay? And, uh, and, and we continue. But first, and most importantly, seek, amen, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And also the kingdom is where we enter into when we receive Yahushua as our savior. We And we become born again. We are then citizens of God's kingdom. That's one of the way, ways it means seek his kingdom and make sure we stay in his kingdom because we can, uh, we can leave his kingdom. And it also says in, uh, uh, in uh, Colossians 1 and 10, I believe it is, or 11, it says that God has drawn us out of the control and the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which is the forgiveness of our sins. So when we seek to be born again, to be, to be in the kingdom, to be saved by the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach, then we are seeking the kingdom. When we every day make the decision that we're going to stick with Yahushua or Jesus and not turn our backs on him, then we are seeking his kingdom. And we, when we make decisions to obey his commands and obey his precepts and his word, we are making the decision to seek his righteousness. So this is what they mean, that these, this verse means. And in verse 34, it says, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And that's Matthew 16, 33 and 34. So our Yahweh Yireh is a good God and he will provide for our needs. And the next name we're going to study is Yahweh Rapha. And that means the Lord, our healer. Now, the first time we come across Yahweh Rapha is in Exodus 15 and 26. And God is telling Moses to tell the people, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So, so God is telling them, you are already healed because he brought them out healed from the land of Egypt. But he said, I'm, I will set you apart from uh, the Gentile nations. You are my set apart chosen people. And when you do what's right in God's sight and when we do what's right in God's sight and give ear to his commandments, and that is what I'm gonna teach on next is the commandments because we have gotten kind of confused about uh, the, this error of grace as opposed to keeping his commandments, but that's going to come later. But we must still keep his commandments. He said, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So, so he is Yahweh, he was Yahweh Rapha, out in the wilderness after they had escaped Pharaoh's uh, army. So he is a healer. He is a healer. And verse two, uh, verse two of 41, one through two says, have mercy on me, O Lord. No, no, I'm sorry. This is Psalm six and two. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak 
Oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. So this is this is something, especially if you're suffering from a bone disease, you can pray this prayer because this is what the the, the psalmist uh, King David prayed uh, uh, to God. And so we know that uh, Yahushua or Jesus is a descend direct descendant of David. So we can ask him, "Have mercy upon me." Oh Lord, for I am weak. Oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. So if you're suffering from arthritis and bursitis and and uh, all kind, any kind of bone or joint disease, this right here is your prayer, my beloved. Okay, now let's go to 41, one through two, and this is a passion translation. Uh, and it reads, God always blesses those who are kind to the poor and helpless. They're the first one God's help, God helps when they find themselves in any trouble. The Lord will preserve and protect them. They'll be honored and esteemed while their enemies are defeated. So this is kind of a, a scripture that tells us who God, how God favors us when we are kind to the poor and we are kind to the helpless. A lot of times, even when we have it, we refuse to give and, and to help the poor. And so, uh, but I, and, and I don't know if anybody that's, that has given into our cause because we are helping a, a, a deprived family uh, for the holiday with food and with clothing and so forth. But uh, when we give, even if, even if it's a dollar, even if it's giving up a soda or some potato chips or something, God sees that. And he honors that with you. So when you call on them, call on him to heal you, He's the, the uh, help you. He's the, he will help you when you find yourself in any trouble. So just remember that 41, Psalms 41, one through two. Now I didn't say this, this is the scripture that it says he always blesses those who are kind to the poor and helpless. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And look at Psalms 3 and 41, 3 and 4. He says, when they are sick, this is a continuation of the last screen. When they are sick, God will restore them. Lying upon their bed, when they are sick, God will restore them. Lying upon their bed of suffering, he will raise them up again and restore them back to health. I love this. So in my sickness, I say to you, Lord, be my kind healer. Heal my body and soul. Heal me, God, for I have confessed my sins to you. So this is a scripture that promise that, that has a condition at, at, at some point that we must uh, be kind to the poor and to the ones that are helpless. And, and so then we have, we can, we can stand on the scripture and plead to God to heal us. And it promises, the scripture promises us that he will restore us. He will restore us and raise us up out of our beds of affliction and restore us back to health. Now that is powerful, my beloved family. That is powerful. And, and, um, and I pray that you are blessed. But see, we can't take, we can't skip over parts of the uh, scripture and just choose what parts we're going to, to abide by or obey. And, and, uh, and, but look at the last part of verse four. It says, for I have confessed my sins to you. So, so a lot, uh, there are so many times uh, uh, that God uh, wants to hear our confession of our sins before he will act on, on our behalf to heal us. Now, there are times when he heals out of his mercy. He heals those who are not even uh, repentant or who, who have not uh, been born again or whatever. But healing is the children's bread. But we make sure that we have confessed our sins to him. We don't assume that we don't have any sins because we cannot see down into our hearts. 
uh, uh, because the um, uh, the the uh, uh, God told Samuel to look not on the outside, and sometimes we just look on our outside. He said, "Look not on the outside, because man looks on the outside, but God looks upon our hearts, and uh, and uh, and the uh, and our hearts can have." sin and transgression and iniquity deep down there where we can't see it. So it's always good to confess whatever God has brought to light to us. We must confess because this could be the difference in sickness and health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's move on. Um, okay. So uh, let's look at uh, Isaiah 53, the, the chapter 53, and it reads verse 3, he or Yahushua is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief or pain, and we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And verse four, surely he has borne our griefs or our pain and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. So we know that the word grief was translated from the word pain into the word pain. And they just decided to use grief grief um, instead of pain. And I wish the translators had actually put pain because a lot of times we are in pain. You know, yeah, we are grieved about certain situations or when we, uh, uh, our loved ones or we lose a loved one or so forth. But sometimes our bodies are just hurting from, from affliction and sickness. So, uh, so he's acquainted. He knows all about pain. He knows all about sorrows. When we lose somebody, when when a, a loved one passes away, or or when something devastating or traumatic happens to us. But look at verse five. This is the good news. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. This is Yahushua, Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace or shalom was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So when we look at uh, the, the, the uh, background or the entomology of uh, this word, uh, scourging, word, the Hebrew word for wounding is scourging or haburah, which means blueness of the wounds. And haburah is taken from the root word habar. Now this is gonna bless you. Habar means to join together, to unite, to have fellowship, to become a couple. So it can also be understood, in all, but, but remember now, there are other nuances of the meaning, but it could be also understood as in the fellowship of being one with Yahushua is our healing. So the closer we get to Yahushua, the more we love him. And, and uh, as we draw near, draw nigh to him, that's where we can be. That's one of the ways we can be healed of the affliction or the sickness that is attacking our body or whatever it may be, whatever it may be. And, and so now we have First uh, Peter 2 and 24. And it says, who his own self, this is Yahushua, Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So Peter is saying you already was healed when he hung on that cross, when he was whipped before he went to the cross. He bare our own sin in his own body on the tree 
that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So you were healed on that cross. You were healed on that whipping post. And this healing includes the body and the soul. And it also includes our emotions. Now, the body, we already know what that is, but, so, but the soul, sometimes we tend not to think about that. But the soul is our mental health. The soul contains our, our uh, uh, it, it really contains our emotions, but it contains our thinking, it contains uh, our intellect, and our emotions, and our decision making. You know, sometimes we don't make very good decisions, but when we are healed by Yahushua, we can make wise decisions, but he, because he becomes our wisdom. He is our wisdom to us. And I talked about that in the last video. But uh, the healing includes our body, our soul. Sometimes we can go through trauma that will just devastate us. We can go through hurt from people and wounds and just life sometimes happens. And it just really kind of blindsides us and, and stops us in our tracks. But see... Yahushua, Jesus, being this, Jesus took our sins so that we being dead to those sins should live unto righteousness and by his stripes we were healed. We don't have to go through mental anguish or trauma or, or negative emotions or, or all of that. Sometimes you may have been emotionally abused as a child and physically abused as a child. But you, but I just want you to know that Yahushua took your sins and his, by his stripes, you were healed, you were healed. So, uh, and so we wanna remember this, that Yahweh Rapha, all that name is so inclusive of everything, body, soul, and our spirits. And if we have not received the work of Yahushua, our sin remains with us and it remains unremitted and unforgiven. So there is, there is a correlation uh, between sin and sickness. Now, I am not saying that all, that, uh, all sickness is uh, a result of sin. But there is a correlation be, uh, between sin and sicknesses. Sin causes six sicknesses in our bodies and also in our souls and our emotions because it's so stressful and it, it makes us uh, anxious and it just really causes a lot of things. And then, my beloved, for the medication, there's side effects of the medication that can, can wound us in our minds and in our emotion, make us act uh, erratic and not normal. So, so uh, we need to be healed, our bodies and our souls and our emotions and our spirit. Now, here's another verse that tells us that there is a correlation between sin and sickness. Now, like I said, I'm not saying all sicknesses uh, are a result of sin. But what, you know, this is what we can do. We can ask God to search our hearts to see if sin is causing and uh, preventing us from being healed. He will, he will answer that prayer quicker than he will giving you a new car or a new house or whatever you're asking him for. Look at this verse. This is one of my favorites. Also, I just love the word of God, family. Okay, in the Psalms 103, this is Psalms 103. I don't have the, the uh, reference here, but it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all, you should say all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And you notice that there is, that's all in the same uh, scripture. So this verse is uh, telling us that iniquities are connected with sickness. 
Uh, and and so so uh, so I just want to pray with you. But your Yahweh Rapha is a healer. He is the Lord that healeth thee. He is the healer. He is your provider, and he never leaves you. Neither do, does he forsake you. So I just want to. Uh, so just I'm going to pray with you. And if if there's anything that you're going through, uh, I want to pray for that, whether it's feeling uh, neglected or whether you feel like God is just nowhere to be found. He's turned his back on you or whether you are, uh, whether you are in need because in this time, in this pandemic, so many are in need and whether you are sick in your body, your, your God, your Yahushua, your Jesus, is there for you and he will come through for you, my beloved family. So let's just pray. Let's just pray. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Father, Abba Yahweh. Father, I just lift up all those who are going through traumatic times and who are feeling neglected and rejected and feeling alone like nobody understands, like no one cares. And Father, I just ask you to show yourself strong on their behalf. Father, I just ask you to, to reveal yourself, manifest yourself to them. Let them know that they are precious and that they are beloved in your sight. Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself and give them the shalom that they are lacking right now. Give them the shalom of God, which would which will guard and keep their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are in need, those who don't have the, the finances or the resources to provide for themselves or their family. Father, I pray that you would supernaturally intervene in their situation. I pray, Father, that you would uh, uh, provide for them, show them how they can, uh, how that you will meet their needs. Father, give them a word of wisdom or so forth, or uh, uh, put them on the mind of some of your beloved uh, children so that, so that they or we can, can give to those who are in need. Even the more, Father, I pray that all of their needs are met. You will supply their needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And I pray for those who are sick in their bodies, Father. And I pray if you are sick, if you are, if you are suffering in your body, put your hand on the part of your body that are suffering. If there's a lot of parts of your body, then put your hand on your forehead. And as we pray, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Yahushua, Hamashiach, right now I lift up those who are sick and in pain in their body bodies. And Father, I thank you that you bore our sickness. You bore our pains. You bore our distress, bodily distress, our afflictions in your own body. And Father, we thank you, Lord. And Father, I ask you to forgive the sins of those who are, who are asking you to heal them. And Father, I ask that you will heal your people, heal your beloved, heal the people that are crying out to you. Father, I thank you that you are the Lord that healeth us. So by the power that is at work in me as your a main servant as your daughter, I send the word into their bodies to heal them and deliver them from their destruction. Uh, and by the power of your word, Father, I send the word and I command the sickness to go out of their bodies. I bind and rebuke the spirit of infirmity and I lose the fire of the Holy Ghost against that spirit and I declare and decree that they are healed in their body in Yahushua's mighty, mighty name. And it is so. Amen. Well, my beloved, I hope that this blesses you. I worked up a little sweat teaching this, but this is, this is, uh, uh, that God wants you to be assured 
that he is with you and he's never going to leave you and never going to forsake you. He is your healer and he is your provider. God bless you. I love you and I wish you a wonderful uh, holiday break. I hope all, everybody's going to get at least one day. Uh, and I wish you a wonderful holiday break. And I love you. And I am going to sign out at this point. Bye-bye for now.